Hi, Carl here for Pro VTV, and today we are starting a new series of videos looking in detail at the new Sony FX9. And this is definitely one of the most exciting cameras on the market at the moment. And it's one that's been getting a huge amount of attention from our customers. In many ways, this is the spiritual successor to the incredibly popular FS7, a camera that has just dominated the owner-operator market, particularly for large sensor broadcast users here in the UK for the last few years. And because of that, there are a lot of FS7 owners out there looking at upgrading to this FX9, as it improves pretty much every aspect of the camera. Better picture, better ergonomics, dual native ISO, and we're going to be talking lots on this channel as to how the FX9 will be an improvement for FS7 owners. But this is not an FS7 replacement. This is its own camera in a new position in the lineup for Sony. It lays the foundations for Sony to fill in the wide gap in their full frame lineup of cameras between stills cameras such as the A7 Mark III and cinema cameras such as the Venice. It's a completely new sensor, adding phase detection hybrid autofocus, dual native ISO, 6K downsampling, and improved color rendition. We haven't had long with the camera, and the weather has been pretty appalling here recently, to be honest. So rather than spending our very short time with the camera trying to film something pretty, instead we decided to do a series of tests to examine and demonstrate each of these new features. We'll have a video coming soon on high ISO performance and that new autofocus, plus several videos discussing how the camera fits into various sectors of the market, just like we recently did with Canon's new C500 Mark II. But for our first test, I wanted to look at colour. So colour is an area that Sony have often been criticised for with the FS7 and the FS5. However, the Venice is an entire different situation with fantastic skin tones and really accurate colours. And Sony are saying that the colours on the FX9 are much closer to the Venice than the FS7. And from what I've seen so far, that does seem to be the case, particularly with their new S Cinetone profile. And this is essentially a Rec. 709 standard picture profile, but with a much softer highlight roll-off and a different colour science behind it. It keeps the mid-range saturation, but without oversaturating the skin tones, and looks far better in the highlights than normal picture profiles do. If we compare the new Cinetone profile to their standard Rec. 709 look in the FX9, you can see the difference straight away. The big difference is of course the highlights. Her white hat here is completely clipped, and it looks really ugly on the standard recording while on the Cinetone, it looks great. And that's the obvious difference, but there's also a definite subtler difference in the skin tones. They're slightly more natural and healthy in the Cinetone, while they look a little bit more washed out in the Rec. 709. Let's now compare it to the same shot done in S-Log3 and apply an LC709 Type A lookup table in DaVinci Resolve. Instantly, we do see a difference. The skin tones look even better, but we have much lower contrast overall. I'd want to tweak the white and the black points a little in this image, but it's pretty much there straight away. And if we do the same thing on an interior scene under controlled lighting, the difference is even more obvious. The contrast on the Cinetone still looks great, but the skin tones now seem a little more lifeless compared to the log, even though they do look better than they did in the standard recording. And remember this is log with just a simple lookup table on it, no further tweaks applied beyond that. I think both the Cinetone results and the log shows just how far Sony have come with their colour science here with the FX9, but what do you think? Are you interested in using this S Cinetone profile for your work? And what do you think of the colour performance of the new FX9 as a whole? Let us know in the comment section down below, subscribe to this channel for more tests of the FX9 and other cameras, and of course, if you want to buy an FX9 for yourself and for your own work, just head over to provi.co.uk. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.